Well, social distancing and stay at home requirements have posed new challenges for social drinkers. Yeah, experts say there's a link between stress and alcohol. Market research firm Nielsen says U.S. alcohol sales rose 55% in mid-March and online sales get this spike 243%. Wow. Yes, take that in. Joining us now is psychotherapist Dr. Michelle Mitchum. Thank you so much for joining us again. Oh, thank you. Good morning, ladies. This is a, a great topic to talk about during this coronavirus mm -hmm. shutdown. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Well, let's start off with the red flags. What are the red flags for when it's social drinking is too much and perhaps an issue? Okay, so that's an excellent question. Have either of you ever been at a social event where everybody's on their first drink and there's this other person on their third drink? Yes. Yes. All too often. You're just looking around and feeling like kind of weird. And you're wondering, okay, you're on your second drink and maybe a lot of people just have a limit. Maybe two is their limit and the other person is on their fourth drink and the average person in the room is on the first or second drink. Mm -hmm. That feeling of being uncomfortable when the majority of everyone in a room is kind of like at one stage and the other person is just like, you know, turning up, right? Mm -hmm. One after the other after the other, just like they're drinking lemonade or sweet tea or an Arnold Palmer. So that's one sign that you think, okay, that's a little bit weird. And you wonder what is all that about? And a lot of times people can hide that if you don't see them often. Mm. So that's mm. one sign. I think everybody has seen that one. Mm. So go ahead. No, and it's quite too often you think you're just a social drinker. What are the signs when you, you kind of got to talk to a friend and they start showing more signs of alcoholism? Right. Yeah, so you can tell if someone is starting to um, be irresponsible, they're missing work, they're missing really important appointments, they're forgetting to pick up their child, you know, things that you know, this is totally out of character, you know that they're a good person, and you feel that something is going on, and you feel like you have to have that courageous conversation. You know, it's time for that difficult dialogue, and, you know, you, you, if there are signs like that. There's, so that's a sign that they're missing things, um, maybe they're not returning your calls. Um, they're drinking in isolation. And of course, like you're saying right now, everyone is isolated. Um, but you can hear the slur over the phone. Maybe you're Skyping with your friends now that are isolated and you see there's something a little bit different. Um, so there's, you know, people who are functional alcoholics or binge drinkers who just maybe drink on the weekend or drink in the evening, drink a whole lot. Um, now that they're at home, you know, who knows what's happening, but you can pick up on signs of them missing things. But right now it's going to be harder to detect if we're isolated and drinking, especially if you have a problem with already an isolating disease. Mm -hmm. So just give us a picture of what binge drinking looks like. Okay. Excellent question. So binge drinking looks like that person you work with Monday through Friday, they're great. They can be a doctor a lawyer, a school teacher, they could be anyone. A professional person, doesn't matter how many degrees you have, they can have you know three or four degrees, it doesn't matter. That person might be great during the week and they attend all their events, they do what they're supposed to do. Then on Friday, right, mm -hmm. Friday, remember that old song, or you're probably too young, it's Friday night, I just got paid. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. okay, so they might Friday night get enough liquor and and beer or whatever to last them through the weekend. And they start at five or six o'clock and they're drinking maybe one, two, three packs of beer, um, going through a fifth of bourbon. And they just keep drinking. And there's a cycle that they just drink and drink and drink the entire weekend. And they know probably by, you know, Sunday morning or noon, they need to stop. And they're disciplined in their drinking, which sounds really bizarre because how can you be disciplined in drinking? Mm -hmm. And then they do what they need to do to get it together, drink a lot of water, drink coffee or whatever on Sunday. And by Monday morning, they're back to normal and they can work that work week and they're fine. Mm -hmm. So binge drinking is really this um, vicious cycle that just pulls people in mm. and they think they have it controlled and they think that they're not an alcoholic because they're just drinking mm -hmm. in a certain period of time. Mm, that is interesting. And especially wow. around these times, a lot of people working from home, some are just staying at home right? and they figure, Hey, I, I don't have much to do. Why not just drink all weekend, mm -hmm. all week actually? Mm -hmm. Yes. 
Absolutely. And it might, you know, what's the harm? So when people start feeling that they're having like blackouts, you know, that's a sign. Are you having a blackout and you wake up and you think, okay, what happened? Where did everybody go? What are we doing? And the family members who are friends know that the person was just blacked out for three, four, five, six hours, and they don't even have a clue that they blacked out. They don't know what was going on. So that's a sign. They think, wow, I think, hmm, maybe I drank too much. And so they, a lot of times people who have a problem with drinking, of course, we know they minimize it, right? Mm -hmm. Half of solving a problem, especially an addiction, is admitting it. And it's very, very, very hard for them to admit and extremely hard for close friends and family that mm -hmm. see this and know there's a problem, but they don't know how to deal with it. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, we will hear more from Dr. Mitchum right after this break. Stay with us for being a woman. We're back with psychotherapist, Dr. Michelle Mitchum. Now to this next thing, a big thing. What are some of the signs of a functional alcoholic? Okay, so with a functional alcoholic, that person might just drink a little bit too much every evening, um, but again, they probably drink in isolation, so it's hard to see. But there may be family members that notice that when they have that one glass of wine that the other person has six or they go through a whole bottle mm -hmm. while sitting at dinner. Uh, so that's a sign. So if other people are feeling uncomfortable around someone drinking. And of course, people say, well, that's very subjective. But overall, you know, if you're with friends and everybody, again, is just drinking one or two drinks, but someone just goes through a whole couple of bottle of wines in one evening, and I love all your photos, uh, that, you know, that's how it happens. Like, hey, you know, we're in a culture where, of course, it's nothing wrong with drinking. People have been drinking since the beginning of time, but it's the consumption. So a red flag is that do you feel uncomfortable? Do other people feel uncomfortable? Um, does that person feel guilty after they've been drinking? Do they feel that they get up in the morning, for example, and they just have to little, you know, people say, I'm going to have a little mm -hmm. drink in yeah. the morning just to calm my nerves. Mm -hmm. You know, that's really absurd. If you're about to go to work in the morning and you, instead of your coffee or tea or your smoothie, right, or your Kavita or whatever, your probiotic, you're thinking, oh, I just need a little alcohol. That's abnormal to be drinking at seven or eight o'clock in the morning to get prepared for work, wouldn't you say? Yeah, yes, definitely. definitely. Yeah, um, I, I understand we are living in uncertain times. Could you, could this lead an alcoholic to relapse? Yeah, absolutely, because right now um, it is uh, normal. Humans want to connect. Connectivity, you know, connecting with others is so normal. We connect over coffee, over lunch. We connect to go bowling or, or, or just meet for drinks or whatever. But people who are isolated, which everyone's isolated, right? Isolated, they can start feeling lonely, mm -hmm. right? A lot of researchers are talking about just being isolated, not having human connection is can be stressful in and of itself. And so if you were already a functional alcoholic or a binge drinker, you can even feel more isolated. And we know that alcoholism does not exist by itself. Alcoholism is connected to depression mm -hmm. or to anxiety. There's always something else that exists with people just don't drink for the sake of drinking. They have some unfinished business with their family of origin. They've had some trauma. They have something going on. This, there's this chemical imbalance and it is a disease, it's serious. And so how you deal with that person who's either a functional alcoholic or a binge drinker um, can be very challenging for the loved ones and the people around them. Mm -hmm. And what about those people who may drink casually? You know, they say they don't drink during the week and they may have a glass of wine on the weekend. Do you think that something like this could turn some of those people into drinking more? Mm -hmm. Well, Typically, the people who um, are the people that self-regulate, they kind of just know their limit, and they really are truly social drinkers, and they just drink that you know, one or two drinks, and they typically have a full life and balance. Some of them are exercising, connecting with people. So if they're pretty much a stable, balanced person. Typically, it's not that person that's going to um, turn into an alcoholic overnight. Okay. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Any advice for uh, people who have overcome addiction in regards to drinking? Any advice for them to how to get over this and get through the situation without turning to the bottle? 
Well, first of all, the admitting it, knowing that they're not alone, because um, there's this, again, this vicious cycle when they do drink and they drink too much and they feel guilty, they've hurt others. As you know, there's a whole, and we can do a whole nother segment on the family members that have experienced someone who's drinking, that they're trying to be enablers and they don't know what to do and they're trying to protect them. And really, when you try to protect someone, it prolongs them because you think that love is enough and love is not enough. So the person that needs help, knowing that, you know, to tell that person, you are not alone, you know, mm -hmm. um, there are millions of other people that are affected by alcoholism and there is help. And so if someone can answer the questions, there are many, many assessments. People can just go online. There, there's like a cage assessment and that's just four simple questions. And those questions are, have you ever felt that you should cut down on your drinking? Have mm -hmm. um, other people been annoyed? you know, because of your drinking? Um, have you ever felt bad, again, or guilty because of your drinking? Have you ever had a drink first thing in the morning? Um, so there's these simple questions that someone can just do a self-assessment in their the privacy of their home to, to, to be real with themselves and have that courageous conversation with self and then call a professional, look into Alcoholics Anonymous, talk to a doctor. There is help out there and they don't have to repeat this cycle because it is lonely it's isolating. It's just um, really, um, you know, it's depressing mm -hmm. and it hurts other people and it makes them less productive. And it could lead to, of course, we know DUIs, you know, mm -hmm. they could get into an accident, kill somebody, kill themselves, hurt themselves. There are a lot of people who have accidents right under the influence, right? Mm hmm. Wow, thank you so much for that, because I feel like that can help a lot of people right now, just knowing those tips and those resources. Exactly. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you.